Welcome to the Lens Housing Tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you all the steps necessary to create this lens housing part. First, we're going to set up the workspace. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to the trackball, and at the bottom of the trackball, I'm going to change the view to top, if it's not already set that way. Next, we'll go to the Window menu, and we'll open up the Show Hide palette, go back to the Window menu, and we're going to show the Snaps palette as well. I'm also going to close the surfacing palette. No surfaces will be created in this tutorial. And I'm just going to move the solids palette up, make it more convenient. You don't have to do this. OK, let's begin. First thing we're going to do is create a circle. We're going to use the center point circle tool. I'm going to click at the origin, drag up the y direction, click again. Then in the diameter field, I'm going to click a value of 10 and hit enter. Then I'm going to simply type a value of 12.5 and hit enter again. Notice how it created a second circle. I didn't have to touch anything. Let's switch over to the isometric view. Then we're going to hop on over to the planes menu. And I'm going to show work plane. And notice the work plane indicator shows up at the origin of the drawing. It's also shown here up in the triad as well. I'm going to select the circle and then with my mouse held over the vertex. I'm not clicking, I'm just holding my mouse over the vertex. I'm going to tap the C key. That's the letter C key on the keyboard. Notice every time I tap the C key, it cycles through the XY, the YZ, the XZ, and the user view planes. In this case, we're going to use the YZ plane. And notice how the plane indicator on the triad shows this as well. Now we're going to go up to the pin menu into color, and then we're going to choose more so that we open up the pin palette, and I'm going to choose a new color for this next set of geometry. Now over in the snaps palette, I'm going to check the work plane snap, and what this does is it keeps our geometry constrained to the work plane indicator. I'm going to use the connected line tool, and I'm going to drag up in the Y direction, and I'm going to type in a value of 1.5 and hit Enter. Then I'm going to drag over into the Z direction, click, and then type in 0.065 and hit Enter. I'm going to drag back up again, click, type in a value of 0.1, and hit Enter. And what this has done is it's created this set of lines. Now I need to keep going with that, but instead of just drawing lines over and over and over again, I'm going to use the Linear Duplicate tool, and I know I want a total of nine of these. I'm going to hit the Tab key, and then I'm going to click and drag from one corner to the other. And notice the values are filled in automatically. When I hit OK, it creates the stairs for me. Back to the connected line tool, I'm going to click and drag again, a value of 0.3. Come back down, click and drag, click, and then type in a value of 0.6, hit Enter. And then I'm going to start the tool again, come back down to the beginning, click to the end point, click back up, type in a value of 1.5, and then just use the drafting assistant to snap to that line we created before. Let's go ahead and lathe the profile now. So I'm going to turn off the work plane snap. It's a good idea to save your file at this time too. Let's do a zoom all. I'm going to use the single line tool and I'm going to drag a line down from the center of the circle and I'm going to use that as a lathe axis later. So we're going to choose the lathe tool. Up in the message line, select objects to lathe. I'm going to drag a selection box around my profile, and then it's asking for a line for a lathe axis. I'll pick the line in the center that we drew earlier, and now we have our part. You'll notice our part after it's been created looks kind of jagged, doesn't look smooth, and that's because the screen resolution isn't set to be very high. So what I'm going to do is select the object, go up to the Edit menu, and choose Change Resolution. And notice it was set to medium, so I'm just going to click Super Fine and click OK. Now that only affects the geometry we just created. But if we want all of our objects from here on out to be smooth, we'll go into the Preferences, click the Display category, and notice how for each object type I can change it to be Super Fine. So from Solid to Surface, I'm going to choose Super Fine. And from Surface, we can choose Curves. And curves I already had set to super fine, so I'll go ahead and hit OK. Now everything will be smooth from here on out. Let's continue building our part. Now when we made that profile before, we made the edges square. But I know I want my part to be blended on the edges, so I'm going to use the radial blend tool. I'm going to set a value of 0.25, and I'm going to click this first edge. 
I'm going to go ahead and type in a value of 0.5 and click the second edge. And I think it's best if you always let the program do the blending whenever it can. So instead of drawing those blends in the profile, I simply put the blends on the solid later on. Now I'm going to go ahead and highlight the part, and I'm going to highlight the lathe axis. I'm going to go over to the Show Hide menu, and I'm going to just click on Hide. I'm going to drag a selection box around the profile that we created, then I'm going to click on Hide again. This gets us back to our original two circles. Up in the Planes menu, I'm going to uncheck Show Work Plane so it goes away. Now we're going to create some extrusions that are going to simulate the focus ring on a camera lens. So let's hop back to the top view. I'm going to use the Spacebar to Pan tool to drag the view down a little bit. Then I'm going to zoom in to the top of our circles. I'm going to change my color again so I can keep track of my geometry. I'm going to use the center point circle tool, only this time I'm going to simply type in a value of 0.6. And for the X, I'm going to type in 0.6. For Y, I'm going to type in 1.35. And Z, I'm going to leave it 0. And I'm simply going to hit the Enter key on the keyboard. Notice it draws my circle for me right where I wanted it. In this case, I knew where the circle was going to go, so I went ahead and typed in the values. We're going to select that circle. Then we're going to come over to the Polar Duplicate tool. I know I want a total of 34. Then I'm going to tab down to the center X value. And notice how the cursor changes to a crosshair. I'm simply going to click in the center point of my circle, or the origin of the drawing. Then I click OK, and it draws those circles for me. I'm going to hop over to Isometric View using the F key on the keyboard. And since I have all my circles drawn with a nice green color, this will make it easier to select using the Select Mask. So under the Window menu, I'm going to open Select Mask. And the Select Mask will show everything possible in a drawing. But I only want it to show what's in my drawing. So I'm going to click Show Attributes Used by Entities. And I'm going to turn off the medium blue color. So now, when I do a Select All, it only selects the lawn green colors in the drawing. Now I'll choose the Extrude Solid tool. And I'm simply going to click two points away from the drawing follow up in the Y direction, and it's going to extrude all of those circles at one time for me. Then I'm going to type in a distance of 2 and hit Enter. Back to the Select Mask, I'm going to click the Select All button in the Select Mask, and what that does is it resets it so everything is now active or available to the Select All. And don't get that confused with the Select All in the Edit menu, which is selecting geometry. So because I extruded all of this geometry at one time, it makes it all one selection set. So clicking any one of those cylinders will highlight the whole set. I'm going to go over to the Show Hide palette, and I'm going to click on the Show option. And what this will do is show everything that was hidden in a ghosted form until I click on it. And then it brings it back into the drawing. So I've clicked on our lathe that we did before, and now it's part of the drawing. Now we'll choose the Subtract Solid tool. And notice it says Pick Solid to Subtract From. So I want to remove parts from this lathe. It says Pick Solid or Surface to Subtract. So I want to subtract those cylinders. Remember, just by clicking one of them, because I extruded them all together, it's going to count as one selection set. So it subtracts all of those cylinders from our ring. Click on Show Only so it just shows our part. And we have a nice looking solid part. In order to keep my drawing clean, I like to move geometry I'm not going to use anymore to a new layer. So I'm going to click the Show All from the Show Hide palette. Then I'm going to highlight my solid part, and then I'm going to hide it from the Show Hide palette. This shows all of my wireframe geometry I used before. Now I'm simply going to hit Apple A to do a Select All. I'm going to go to the Window menu, choose the Design Explorer, and then click on the Layer Manager tab. Double-click Layer 1's name. So it will rename it, and I'm going to choose to rename it Lens. Then I'm going to go down to the bottom of the Layer Manager palette, and I'm going to choose Create a New Sublayer. And it's now called Lens 1, and notice it's a sublayer of Lens. I'm going to go into the Window menu, and I'm going to open up Edit Objects. Because all of my objects are selected, it shows me that they're in Lens Layer. But I'm going to pull that down and choose Lens 1 and hit Apply. And notice how it moved 59 of my 60 objects to that Lens 1 layer. 
I'm going to turn off that layer, and now all of my geometry is gone. But because I hid my solid part before, I can simply do Show All in the Show Hide palette, and now it's the only thing on the screen. So the first thing I'm going to do is I need to get my work plane back to the origin, and the easiest way to do that is to go down to the work plane indicator down at the bottom left and choose Global Work Plane. This will reset my work plane back to the origin of the drawing. Now I'm going to open up the Design Explorer again, and I'm going to click on the Create New Layer button. It's the first one on the left. And I'm going to right mouse click this time and choose Rename. I'm going to rename this one Base. I'm also going to click in the first box on the left, which will make this the active layer. So any geometry I create now will go onto the base layer. I'll switch back to the top view by simply tapping the letter D on the keyboard. Then I'll go into the pen, color, more, and I'm going to choose another color for this next set of lines. Now I'll select the single line tool and I'm going to click the center, come over the X direction and click again. Then I'm going to type in a value of 10. I'll click the center again. This time we'll go down the Y direction, click, and we'll type in a value of 14. 0.5 and hit enter. Now I'm going to hide my part from the screen because I don't need it showing on the screen anymore. I'll tap the letter F on my keyboard and that will switch me to isometric view mode. Then we're going to highlight that top line and hold our mouse over the endpoint. We're going to tap the letter C on the keyboard twice to give us the YZ plane. In the snaps menu we'll choose the work plane. Then I've created a shortcut for my pen menu, and I'm just going to open that and change colors once again. Let's go choose the Connected Line tool. Let's click on that endpoint, and we're going to drag out, click, and we're going to type in a value of 10.6 and hit Enter. Then we'll come up the Y direction, click, and we're going to type in a value of 0.6. Then we're going to come out the X direction again, click, and we're going to type in a value of 2.3. Hit Enter. I'll go up and I'll click the Selection tool, and I'm simply going to tap the letter A on my keyboard, which will flip us over to the right side view. Then I'm going to use the Single Line tool. I'm going to click on that endpoint, and I'm going to come down perpendicular from that line, click, and then I'm going to type in a value of 1.65, hit the Tab key, and type in a value of 260 for the Angle field, and hit Enter. And it created that angled line for me. We'll start a new line at the end point of the angled line. We'll come over the X direction, and we'll type in a value of 0.6, and hit Enter. After doing a Zoom All, I'm going to use the Connected Line tool. I'm going to click our original start point, and I'm going to come up the Y direction and click again type in a value of 1.2 and hit Enter. Then I'm going to come out the X direction and I'm just going to draw a line that's longer than the geometry we drew before. I don't really care how long this is. We'll switch to Right View. Then I'm going to zoom in close to the endpoints of those two lines that we have. Now I'll choose the Parallel Line tool. And what this does is it drags off a line based on an existing line. So I'll choose the Angled Line. Then I'm going to snap to the end point of this short line. And notice how this line is a little bit shorter than we need it. So I'm going to use the Trim tool. And the message line says, Pick Selection to Trim. Shift equals Select Boundary. Option equals Relimit. So I'll hold down the Shift key, and I'll select the two lines. And then I'll hold the Option key down, which flips it over to the Relimit tool. I'll relimit the short line. It will extend its boundaries, and then I'll just simply trim off the end of the other line. Now I'll use the Selection tool to select the angled line. Then I'm going to hold my cursor over the end point of that line, and I'm going to tap the C key so that it moves the work plane to the end point of that line. I'll switch back to the top view by simply tapping the letter D on the keyboard. We use the three-point arc tool, and we're going to also turn on the work plane. So we're going to click our first point at the work plane, second point at the end point of the line, and then using the drafting assistant, we're just going to snap to a point that's based off of the first point we clicked. In the message line, I'm simply going to change the X3 value, which is the third point we clicked, to negative 20, and this will make our arc uniform on both sides.